What's going on, everybody? My name is Stefan Coons, and I am the CEO and owner of Pursuit Health and Performance, and this is the Everyday Pursuit Podcast. Real quick, though, if you're watching this on Facebook, I want to hashtag live just so I know you're watching this live, or if you're watching this on replay, hashtag replay squad. I just want to know where you guys are coming from, see how many people watch this live or, or live on any other social media. Use those hashtags. I'd really appreciate it. Um, I had a question from a client, like, I don't know, this, I think it was like Monday, today's Friday, uh, you know, saying like, well, why did you call it pursuit health and performance? And that's a great question. Uh, I spent like three months thinking about what I wanted to do when I rebranded this company used to be called SK fitness LLC for my initials. Uh, and obviously kind of lame, but <laughs> I didn't really care. It's just, you know, it was just me, but now we have a whole team. I was thinking like, what is a word that describes like my journey um, and, and like what I want my clients to strive for? And it was like being, I, I thought like, okay, constantly like wanting to improve yourself, constantly wanting to achieve greatness. And then I'm like, it just like literally popped and I'm like pursuit, like I'm in pursuit of this, I'm in pursuit of that. And I feel like that's what life is. We're in constant pursuit of something, hopefully, you wake up and you say, I want to become a better person. I want to help people. I want a better relationship. I want more money. I want a better body. Like is being in pursuit, right? The journey, quote unquote, that is what life is all about. And we've seen all these like quotes and memes. And I know it sounds cliche. It's like, oh, it's more about the journey than the destination, but it really is. And as soon as you're not in pursuit of something, life gets very depressing and lonely right? Like it's the challenges that mold us and shape us. And this is really off topic kind of for today's top for today's podcast uh, subject, but it plays in a little bit because I used to surround myself with friends that really just didn't push me um, at all, like at all. I was the most driven, most high achieving friend of all my friends. And I'm not like super successful or anything. That's not what I'm saying. But like all my friends were just mediocre. Like it's, and, and it's not me judging somebody saying, oh, your finance and your career makes you like a better or worse person. But for this point of this podcast, like they're not very driven, right? Like they had like mediocre paying jobs. They didn't really take care of themselves with fitness. I mean, they weren't out of, you know, like what most people would consider out of shape. They weren't like 20, 30 pounds overweight. You know, they had decent bodies, but they weren't like high achievers. They weren't really trying to like grow in a lot of areas of their life. And I had that all throughout, you know, like high school. Um, and then when I joined the military, I thought it was going to change everything. I was like, oh, when I joined the military and I was very into fitness at a young age. Um, so I was like, hey, you know, if I, if I join, I'm going to be surrounded by my people. Little did I know, uh, most of the people in the Air Force at the base that I was stationed at, we're not super into fitness. Now there was some, right? Like in the military, people are more fit than the civilian world. But like I worked in mechanics and a lot of people were like not going to the gym, eating fast food, drinking a lot on the weekends. Like it was actually the most unhealthy part of the military. I felt like it was. Um, I used to get chastised and made fun of for being fit and for packing my lunches and eating protein. People used to give me shit for it all the time but she had to have thick skin in the military. And it's not that it hurt my feelings. I just was like, this is not the environment I want to be in. Um, you know, maybe I should have joined the Marines or something, but like I was really big into working out and fitness and it just was not prioritized. And I, I had to be like the lone sheep and it was, it was lonely. Cause I really, even now I struggle with making good friends, uh, as an adult, because I have high expectations of what I want my friends to be like not because I'm think I'm too good for people, not because I'm stuck up. It's actually because I have a weakness. Okay. Just like everybody else. And my weakness is you become like the people you're surrounded by and you spend the most time with. That's a very true statement or like you're a sum of the people, five people you spend the most time with or surround yourself with the most. True. It's very true. Like people will rub off on you. So I didn't want to surround myself with people that were unambitious in their career had crappy relationships, were fat and out of shape. You know, their, their, their only fun was drinking. I, you know, I did that for years. Trust me. 
And I started to slip back into it. And although I kept working out because I like going to the gym, I was eating crappy. I had a bad relationship. Um, I wasn't probably the father that I should have been. I, I wasn't, I was pretty driven at work, but like not to the point that I'm at now because nobody pushed me. I had nobody pushing me. And in fact, when you're at the pinnacle, not pinnacle, but like the top of your friend zone, people want to drag you down. Even your friends that love you because it's a, it's a comfort discomfort thing. They are uncomfortable. Like you, you make them a little uncomfortable that you're like the one that's in like the best shape and the most successful, whatever. And so they'll drag you down, right? Even if it's un, not unintentional, like my best friend would never intentionally maliciously drag me down, but you know, like being around him, I mean, he's changed a lot over the years, but like being around him when he was younger, I wanted to just be kind of a hooligan and not be as responsible and do all that. Cause like, that's the life he was living. And I realized at a very young age, probably like 23 that I, I mean, this was young for me that I really needed to keep my circle extremely small and I would not become best friends or friends with somebody. And you know how hard it is after high school to make friends, especially if you move states as an adult. It's very challenging. And I thought all oh, the military was going to be it. Nope. I found all these guys that I did have a lot in common with, but they didn't have fitness in common with me. And I knew I couldn't be their friends. And what people don't realize is like, like are, are they're good friends, right? And this is how I look at it. You have friends that fill each role. Like you can have a party friend, you can have a a uh, friend that you go to for relationships, you can have whatever. But if you think about somebody that's like a best friend, they fill all those roles. Maybe not as good as everybody else, but they, you know, like they they kind of have everything to give you, right? That's why they're your best friend because you have this in common and this in common and probably the same ideologies and you like the same stuff. And not that you need to be a freaking identical twin with them, but it was hard for me to be with the best friend because I'm like, dude, fitness is such a big part of who I am and exercise and eating healthy and caring about my body how could I be with somebody that doesn't give a shit about any of that? Like, it's very challenging. It's like being in a relationship with somebody that just doesn't care and never eats healthy and never wants to exercise. I mean, even my wife and I, like, I am more into fitness, uh, you know, than, than she is, but she prioritizes her health still and her looks and takes care of herself. Um, I couldn't imagine with being, you know, married, like some super fit, good looking person that's very ambitious being with somebody that is, you know, the opposite, like it just probably wouldn't work out. And this isn't me for coming from like a shallow point either. This is just coming from a point of like, you need stuff in common with the people you spend time around. Like you, I'm sure you don't pick your friends that have nothing in common with you or the big things in your life are the complete opposite. And so the reason that I was held back a lot in my fitness journey is because my friends were, I mean, it's my choice, but my friends were really making me like out of shape. Because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't go out and drink. And if it wasn't for the social pressure, which I caved into, I wouldn't be eating shitty foods. But people made me feel bad for it. They're like, oh, like even, even sometimes uh, with my family, they're like, oh, you're going to, you know, oh, you're going to eat a salad or, oh, okay, Stefan can't have pizza. And people do that because it makes them feel uncomfortable that they don't have the discipline. That's the truth. And like, yeah, my family loves me and they want to give me crap. I, I get it. Uh, but like, Really, the real truth is they're jealous of the discipline. Like, who cares if I don't drink alcohol? Who cares if I eat one piece of pizza? How does that affect you? Well, it affects you because now you feel guilty because you're eating four pieces of pizza and having three drinks and you wish you had the self-control. So it's better to just make somebody feel like shit for something that you wish they had. It's poor people do it to rich people. They go, oh, it must be nice. Like freaking get, you know, I bet you just got all this and you're born into money and blah, blah, blah. Instead of acknowledging that like, Hey dude, you probably worked really hard for it. I'm happy for you. Um, that's great that you're so organized and have so much discipline that you could have a successful career. They just shit on them. And that's kind of why like your friends might be making you fat. Like they might be a huge, strong contributor to number one, tempting you. And it can come from a place of being malicious or not. Usually it's not but your friends want to be comfortable. Like they don't want to feel awkward. And so I deal with so many men that go, yeah, I'm like really, really good. And I'm on this fitness program. Uh, but like my friends always want to go out and like, I want a social life. And I go, well, are any of your friends on a fitness program? Do they have a coach and a nutrition plan? Well, no. So why, like you can't expect the same from them, right? Like they don't, they didn't invest money and time and all this stuff. They're not on it. So of course they're going to be like, ah, oh, come drink with us. 
good intentions. They're trying to hang out with you, but they don't realize that they're sabotaging your success, right? A really good friend will support you. And all you have to do is have a conversation and say, Hey dude, look, I'm spending this much money per month for a coach. I'm, this is a really important part of my life. I will, I will like still have a drink with you. Um, but like, I, I just, am, I have to kind of change what, what my lifestyle used to be like, because that lifestyle made me have a, a, you know, a gut and I have low energy and I don't feel good. And I really want to turn my life around. A good friend is going to be like, yeah, dude, no, I get that. Maybe I should do that too, or at least support you or not pressure you. And the people that do pressure you, I'm sorry. I don't think they're good friends. I think they, they should, they should sit there and it, you know, if, if food's an issue, if alcohol's an issue, if partying's an issue, they should support it. That's like you saying, hey, um, I'm really tempted to cheat on my spouse if I'm put myself in this environment. And then you're like, because right, you're tempted to do something maybe you shouldn't do or shouldn't be doing or isn't conducive to your relationship health. And your friend's like, no, nah, come out with me and do it anyways. Not a good friend, right? So you're telling your friend like, hey, when I put myself in these environments and I'm going out all the time with you guys, I'm literally going the opposite direction as my fitness goal. It doesn't mean I can't do it at all. But I can't do it at the level you guys are at, right? And just look at your friends. <clears throat> are your friends who you want to be like? Are your friends your dream? Are your friends like, I want to be like that person, right? And I'll be super honest. We make a joke in my house. I have no friends. I mean, I kind of have friends. Like I have my OG friends from high school that... I really like, I, I love them and I look up to them in some ways, but I don't want to be like them. I don't want to have the careers they have or have the body they have or whatever. And like, they have some things that are awesome about them and we've really are like brothers, but I'm not like aspiring to be like them. So it is hard because I am a newer entrepreneur and I want to surround myself with people that are actually better than me, like have better relationships or better husbands, dads, uh, owners, everything because then they're going to push me and they're not going to let me settle for shit. And it is hard. I'm telling you one of the hardest things to do is, and you'll find this everywhere on social media is giving up relationships, like giving up relationships that don't serve you. Uh, I had to do it with people that were really close to me really close family because they were toxic and they were literally bringing me down. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, as soon as I was able to cut ties or set very, very clear boundaries, my life actually, actually skyrocketed. Like I've even had to do that with my own blood and flesh mother. Okay. Which is, you know, that's a story for another time, but like I've had to set those boundaries. And as soon as I did my career actually skyrocketed and my stress went down and it was more of the life that I was envisioning for me. Okay. And you have to live out your dream. If you're going to let your friends hold you back, this is the real truth. And this is a hard pill to swallow. Most people don't really give a shit about you. Like they really don't. Um, I'm sure you have like your friends that would ride or die, take a bullet for you. But most of your like friends, right. That you're, you know, that's not your best friend. Like, oh, I kind of know this person and we hang out sometimes. If it came down to it, you or them, they'd pick them every time. And if you were really, really, really struggling, would they like let you move in and like help support you financially and take care of you, help you with your kids and whatever. That's a good friend. But most people wouldn't because as soon as like it's, while it's convenient, they'll be your friend. But if it's inconvenient or it takes things away from them, they won't. And a lot of these friends that you're feel like, like, oh, I have to hang out with them or, oh, you know, they're part of my social circle. Dude, they don't care. If they cared, then you could have a conversation with them and they would support whatever you're doing and be proud of you and encourage you not sit there and shame you and make you feel like shit or social pressure you so they feel more comfortable in the situation. That's the truth. That's the real truth. And if it means you have to cut friends, if it means you have to cut family, do it. It's going to be the hardest thing you do, but those will be the chains that are holding you back for the rest of your life. And you'll, and you know it, just think for a second, who's your, who's your shitty friend, right? I think we all have one. Like who's your friend that's like always trying to get you to kind of maybe get in a little more trouble or maybe do things that like, eh, you know, like, they're, they're, they're pushing the boundaries. That friend needs to go. That friend needs to go or you have to set very clear boundaries they respect. And if they don't respect them, they have to go. Family too. Because you'll stay down and then you're going to be like, oh, well, but it's my friend. Oh, but it's my mom. Oh, but it's my sister. Oh, but it's whatever. Oh, it's my spouse. 
And then you're the one that's going to be unhappy. And you're the one that has to live with all those emotions and all the feelings and all the regret and all the, oh, I didn't achieve this. And I didn't achieve this. And my life sucks. That person really doesn't care because their life is their life. And your life is your life. Like, that's the truth. Like, you know, and I'm not saying emotionally, they don't care, but not enough to make a difference. Right? Like if you ask me, like, if I think people care that people outside the US are suffering and in poverty. Yes, I do think people care. I think people are good. I do. But I also think that a lot of people don't really give a shit because what are we going to do? Like, I just give away all my money. Like, there's only so much we can do. And I think a lot of people um, are in that mindset. Like, and, and some people do. Some people take extreme action and they go and they do mission trips and all this. But most people have a good heart. They're not bad people. They just like don't know how they would fix that issue. And a lot of these friends are like that too. They want you to do well. They don't want to see you suffer, but they're also not going to really like do anything and get creative to help you or make them feel uncomfortable. So you feel more comfortable. They're going to kind of be a little bit selfish. And I had to learn that the hard way from getting fit shamed, which is a very true thing. You might laugh and be like, oh, ha, ha. no, just like fat shaming is kind of a thing, right? Like if, if that's a thing, then fit shaming is a thing. Cause I've dealt with it my entire life. Right. Like people make jabs at fat people or say they're lazy or whatever. Okay, dude, I've, if, if you hang around people that are not into fitness and you're into fitness, ask any person, you get shit your whole life. And people have made me feel stupid and worthless and called me obsessed and said that I'm crazy and all these other things, which I have thick skin, but it's kind of hurtful. I'm like, dude, I could literally be doing so many negative things with my life, but I, I work I like, all I do is work exercise, like train and hang out with my family. That's basically it. That's basically it. I think that's like pretty good to put my time. I'm taking care of my family and my friends, people I love, taking care of my employees and helping people all over get in shape. And then I take care of my own physical body and spirituality and all that stuff. So yeah, that's where all my time goes. I'm not doing a lot of like entertainment and numbing myself through getting drunk all the time and partying. I used to do that. Oh yeah, every weekend in the military. But it's also because I was surrounded by friends that didn't give a shit and they didn't prioritize anything health. And in fact, I tried. I'm like, you want to go to the gym with me? And they go and they would hate it. And I'm like, okay, so when I ask you to go to the gym or do anything physical, you don't want to do it. You say it sucks, whatever. But like, if I complained about going and drinking, you're like, oh, you're you're a pussy or you're whatever, right? Like, I, I'm telling you, the social pressure was super hard. And I had like a three, a two year stint when I went through my divorce, well, I guess like a year and a half where I was still in the military. And I was very, very lonely, very lonely. It was just me and my son. And I didn't really want to get in a relationship, but I am very social and I wanted people, but I couldn't find any people that I wanted to be around. And I would rather be around toxic people that aren't part of my lifestyle than be alone. And that's what I chose. And it literally ran me into the ground. I was out drinking every weekend. And like, I was responsible, but I was abusing my body way more, really lack on sleep, like doing this, like binge eating, binge drinking just to be super healthy during the weekday. And it was like a year of that. And my body was run down and my will was run down. And it was just like such a negative, toxic environment that I had to leave it. And during that time, I had periods where I was like super out of shape and disgusted with my body and just how it felt too. And then I, there was times where I was like, okay, you know, like I'm, I'm done. I, I need to like clean up and I'd be like really good for a month and kind of cut back on the drinking and then get back into it and get back into it. And I see this with our clients. I train some clients right now that are in that same boat. And I know their friends, the temptation to like go out and like, and then and going out to eat and getting some drinks is not bad, I'm not demonizing it. But for most people, they're going out and they're getting drunk most weekends. And they're, when they're drunk, they're probably eating shitty food. Like it's very hard to, improve your physique when you're getting drunk every weekend, even if your macros are on point in training, trust me, I've tried it. Okay. So you can do it, but it's very challenging. Maybe in your early twenties, you're good, but like 25 and up, it's very, very hard. Um, and so I train these like mid 30 year olds that think they can do that. And they're like, but I'm doing everything else. I'm like, bro, you got to cut back on the alcohol. Well, but like, that's all my friends like to do. I know in America we have, and like, look, I love beer and I love alcohol. But we've gotten to the point where that's like our number one source of entertainment is drinking. Everything involves alcohol. Go bowling, drink. Go golf, drink. Go to the movies, get a beer. Like 
everything involves drinking. So it is very hard to remove yourself. And then if you don't drink, you're weird. Like that's kind of how people view you. Like, oh, you're the weird guy. Why aren't you drinking? Or do you have alcohol issues? I tell people like, no, no, I, I have zero alcohol issues, zero cravings for alcohol. What if I just don't want to feel like crap? Is that okay with you? Like, you know, and I, and it sucks having to be around these people and explain yourself. And the real truth is, trust me, I've tried this. You will fall back into that every time, every time, because you really hit this crossroad where you're like, so do I just not hang out with my friends and do I just never go out and have no social life or do I give in? What if you had friends though that drank in like very moderation and very seldomly, but they did positive things, right? Like things that didn't involve alcohol and crappy food where you could prioritize your health, but you were still bonding. And I got into this out of the military. I had friends that did mountain biking. Um, I went to church with them. I like did hikes with them. And guess what? Sometimes when we were done mountain biking, we would get a beer. Okay. So it's not like we would never drink, but we, but we still really took care of our, our bodies and we did healthy, productive things. We talked about business. Like after this, I'm going to lunch after I work out with a friend that is a coach and he's productive. And I know he's not getting messed up every weekend. And so I'm putting myself in these scenarios, even if it's lonely for a certain period of time, because I look at my goals and I work really hard, just probably like you. And I don't want anything to deter me from it. The only person I would let deter me from a goal is somebody that really would care. But the problem is those people that are deterring you, they don't care. Okay? They don't really care. Like my wife would, would do anything for me and she would bend over backwards and sacrifice as she should, right? Like I just like I do with her. And that's somebody that cares. But these people that you're surrounding yourself with are, are dragging you down. And if they don't, I mean, like, think about it. Think about the logic. If you're like, I want to stop putting, you know, poison in my body as often. I want to eat healthier foods because I feel better and I have more energy and I want to be really focused on growing my business or finding a healthy relationship. You think you're going to find a, a super healthy relationship at a bar? Probably not. For most people, you're probably not. Not that you can't, but if you're going out and, and, and I tried when I dated after my first divorce, I, I, was out at bars looking for girls. And you know what? I found these girls. And what did they do every weekend? They went out and partied. Some of them worked out. Some of them didn't, but they were in this, like going out every weekend, going out every weekend. And so when I tried to date them, I'm like, well, I don't want to go out. And they're like, but this is what I do for fun. Same thing, right? Versus if I would have met a girl on a hike or at a gym or whatever, then I probably maybe would have connected more. I didn't realize that because I was stupid and young, but and, you know, and I was in the party scene. And so that's what I kind of wanted to do. But I also had this other part of me that really didn't want that lifestyle, but I didn't know any different. I did it for freaking 10 years, like from a high school at 16 to 25. I just felt like I partied every weekend. And like, that was besides the gym, that was like my thing of entertainment. That was my mental escape. And, um, and, and it's holding you back, you know, your friends, or just people that you surround yourself with, it's hard. And this, look, this comes from somebody that nobody in my family is like into fitness. They're really not. Not like I am, okay? Uh, I'm the most fitness-ish person on my mom's side and my dad's side out of all the family that I'm aware of. And so it is challenging, okay? And I, you know, and I'm, guys, I don't think I'm like, a, I, I've had points in my life where I'm like a super workout freak, I train five to six days a week for about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. That's not insane, right? I'm not doing like, oh, these Ironmans all the time and all these things. But like, I'm surrounded by people that really don't train consistently and don't prioritize their health. So it's been challenging, but I've chosen to be just the, the light and the example of like, hey, if I have to be this person and I have to be a little more lonely, then that's what I have to do. Because at the end of the day, if I didn't, and I was like, you know, change and molded to them a little bit more. And I, you know, had kind of a belly and wasn't in very, very good shape. Maybe they would accept me more. I mean, because I'd be more like them, but like, I would rather be kind of not accepted, but in a good way because I'm above that. Right. And it was really hard. And I had times where I kind of got drugged back into it and drugged back into it and, you know, gave into social pressure a million times, but I get better at it. And for some people, if you realize that you've tried to kind of like go away from it and you keep getting drugged back in it from your friends, 
this is my plea to you to just get new friends. And it's hard and it's going to be a little bit lonely and it's going to, it's going to be a process and you're going to have to put yourself in uncomfortable environments. Um, go to some group fitness classes, find some so socials on Facebook. They literally have like fit singles meetups, like go on hikes together and stuff. I know it sounds super weird. I get it. I get it. So maybe uncomfortable, but you're never just going to probably like find somebody. I mean, maybe at the gym, you can kind of talk to somebody and build a friendship with them, but you know, like it's better to just go and search for people that are searching for other friendship. Right. And I think technology is a great thing. And I would highly suggest just like doing some meetup apps, um, or just making conversation with people that uh, on social media. And that's something that I think has been a powerful tool to me. I look at somebody's profile and I'm like, ah, oh, this person looks legit. This person looks like they have a lot in common with me. Oh, do they live in Arizona? Hey, let's meet up for coffee. Like bro date, I, you know, or whatever. Like, I'm not going to do it with a female, but the whole point is like, you kind of have to put yourself out there a little bit and pick and choose, right? You can't just expect to just, oh, I'm just going to all of a sudden get these friends. And this has been really challenging for me because all my time goes to work and my family and training. Um, so don't let your friends drag you down. Don't let your friends be the excuse to why you're fat and why you're out of shape, because you probably know deep down inside that they have a strong influence, right? Uh, especially if you're single. If you're not single in your relationship, it might be your spouse, which I get it. You're not just going to leave your spouse, but you can also have that conversation in the boundaries and say, hey, this is something I'm doing for myself. You don't have to do it, but I'm doing it and I need your support. And we have a ton of that. We have spouses that are you know, couples that work out and the other spouse doesn't really train and they have to have that honest conversation. And if the spouse is a good spouse, they're going to support them emotionally, right? And not shit on them and not make them feel bad and usually what happens is one person gets in shape and the other one goes, ah, damn, you know what? I want to do that. And they end up joining the program too and getting in shape. Why? Why did they do that? Because it's uncomfortable being different. You understand that? That's what I said in the beginning. It's uncomfortable for that person to sit there and be married to somebody that is like fit. And then they kind of feel bad about themselves and they want to be equal, right? And so that's comfort. Equal equality is comfort. So what they do is like, well, I, I know that you're not going to come back down to this level. So I need to go up. And that's great. I think that's healthy. And so the problem with your friends is they see you up and they know, hey, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to get in that shape. So it's easier for me to actually bring this person back down. So they're on my level because then it's comfortable because then we're equal. You understand that? Some of it's unintentional guys, but you have to make a change. You might have to get some new friends. Do not let your friends, your family, or even your spouse be the thing that's holding you back from living a happy, healthy life. They don't need to be super jacked and tan and fitness model either, but there needs to be a balance of the things you do. And if you are out of shape and you don't like the way you look, you've probably been out of balance, right? For a very long time. You've done very little exercise or very little like nutritional strategy, and you haven't held yourself accountable. You're not just going to wake up one day and be like, oh, okay, I'm starting today um, without any type of support, right? Which is what clients get from us for, as a coach. But if you're not getting a coach, you better have freaking friends that support you and that do fit things and that aren't going out and partying all the time because it's very challenging. Take it from somebody that lived that lifestyle for a long time, a very long time. And I was looking back, I was pretty unhappy. Um, I felt very Inter like a lot of internal confliction. Like I was not living what I knew I wanted to live. And it really caused a lot of stress, which caused me to drink more because I wanted to numb it. I didn't want to face reality of like what I was doing. Um, now I'm much happier. I'm building more of the life that I want to live. I've matured. And, you know, I just ask you guys to kind of do the same. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, if it was, please like, comment, subscribe, share this episode. If you're on Facebook, give me a thumbs up. Uh, again, hashtag live or hashtag replay squad. If you're watching this on replay, uh, if, if you feel like we're really worth it, I strongly suggest you pause this, leave us a five-star review on Apple podcasts or Spotify. I would really, really appreciate it guys. Um, any feedback and support is, is, you know, greatly appreciated. It means the whole world to me. Uh, I love you guys. I love what I do for a living and I'm going to keep making these to inspire and educate you guys so you can make better decisions, become healthier every day. Talk to you next time. Love you guys.